Well, let me greet you wherever you may be. What has brought people from all over the world together here in this conference is the recognition that humanity is at a crossroad. There is clearly the danger that the present geopolitical confrontation between those forces who want to assert that the Western liberal model of democracy should be the only good and accepted one, and those who insist that the idea of an unipolar world is irrevocably past and has already been replaced by a multipolar world order could lead to a thermonuclear war. Such a war could be ignited by design or by accident in the short term over the proxy war in Ukraine. Such a crisis could erupt before the end of the year. If the proposals made earlier this year by such people as Malcolm Chalmers, the Deputy General Sec Secretary of the Royal Institute of the Royal United Service Institute, Rusi, to quote, cook the Russian frog by provoking a Cuban missile crisis on steroids, as he says, over an Ukrainian attempt to reconquer Crimea. <clears throat> Russia could view this as an existential threat and activate its nuclear arsenal on the highest alert and threaten its use, says Sharma. This would be a moment of extreme danger, he says, but because of the extreme imminent danger of such a situation, it would be easier for all parties to find compromises. To propose a policy which aims to drive the strategic conflict to the edge of the extinction of the human race, does not even find a comment by the governments of the all so good governments of the rules-based order. But to argue with the facts that the Russian intervention in Ukraine has a prehistory can in the worst case get you a jail sentence, according to a new law passed by the German parliament on October 20th with a change of article 130 of the criminal code, paragraph five. In tune with this British perspective is apparently the Ukrainian Deputy, Def of Deputy Defense Minister Harilov, who just said in an interview with Sky News, we can step in Crimea by the end of December, and emphasized about the retaking of Crimea. It's only a matter of time, of course, we would like to make it sooner than later. The British seem to want to excel themselves in creating world wars, as it was Boris Johnson who personally made sure in April that the promise of ending the war through negotiations was sabotaged. Unfortunately, it seems to be the majority of the transatlantic security establishment, many of whom just met at the Halifax International Security Conference, who agree the way to protect global democracy right now is with weapons and support for Ukraine's battle against Russia, not talks. Rejecting even the proposal of General Mark Milley, chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff of the United States, that it may now be the time for diplomacy. It is this criminal policy of nuclear brinkmanship, which contains the danger of the annihilation of the entire human species in a global nuclear war and following nuclear winter, which is what automatically makes every individual on earth a world citizen who has to take the responsibility for the outcome of this present conjuncture of human history. We therefore want to catalyze an international movement of world citizens who are committed to propose a new international security and development architecture which will take into account the interest of every single country on the planet. This concept to consider the interest of every country was the principle of the Peace of Westphalia, which laid the basis for peace after 150 years of religious war in Europe and represented the beginning of international law and laid the foundation for the UN Charter, which we need to uphold and reassert. 
what are the fundamental principles on which such a new global security and development architecture must be built? The absolute center for such a new architecture must be the image of man about which all nations can agree. Man is differentiated from all other species by his gift of creative reason, that he or she is the only creature that can again and again discover new valid principles of the physical universe. And through the application of the scientific and technological progress in the production process can increase the quality of life, longevity, and number of human beings living. It is that creative potential which makes human people sacred. The epoch which is coming to an end is the period of the last approximately 600 years, which began with the emergence of the sovereign nation state <clears throat> based on the writings of Nicolas of Cus and the first sovereign nation state of Louis XI in France in the 15th century, being concerned for the first time with the common good of the people. And the opposition to this idea on the side of the Venetian Empire. For 600 years, there has been a continuous battle between those two forms of government, between the sovereign nation state and the oligarchical form of society, vacillating back and forth, with sometimes a greater emphasis in this or that direction. All empires based on the oligarchical model were oriented towards protecting the privileges of the ruling elite while trying to keep the masses of the population as backward as possible, because as sheep, they are easier to control. And we hear something about that a little later. It was considered normal to keep a certain portion of the people as slaves or helots, as Schiller describes it in his writing about the laws of Solon and Lycurgus, which can be killed if they get too many. It was the same oligarchical outlook, which was the basis of the ideology of Malthus and the underlying assumption of all colonial policies, including in the modern forms of colonialism, of which President Sukarno had warned in his speech at the first Bandung conference in 1955. It is against this modern day colonialism against which there is now a powerful renaissance of the non-aligned movement, which is working on a new economic system involving the BRICS plus, which more and more countries want to join, the Shanghai Cooperation Organization, the Eurasian Economic Union, and other organizations of the Global South. Already during the Roman Empire, Christianity emerged, and for the first time in European civilization came the idea of the sacredness of each human person as in the image of the creator, being gifted with that creative power, the quote, vis creativa, as Cusa calls it, which emanates from his or her likeness with the creator. That same idea is also found in the other two monotheistic religions, Judaism and Islam, as well as secular humanism, Confucianism or Indian philosophy and religion in the tradition of the Vedic writings, as well as echoes of the idea found in other cultures. Whenever currents emerged in these religions which deviated from the idea that all human beings are sacred, like in the Crusades or the Inquisition, it meant they were instrumentalized by the oligarchical elites for their purposes. The new paradigm, which will be characteristic of the new epoch and towards which the new global security and development architecture must be directed, therefore must eliminate the concept of oligarchism for good and proceed to organize a political order in such a way that the true character of humanity as the creative species can be realized. Therefore, I suggest that the following principles must be discussed and if agreed upon, be realized. These ideas 
are meant to be food for thought and a dialogue among all people concerned to find a basis for a world order guaranteeing the durable existence of the human species. First, the new international security and development architecture must be a partnership of perfectly sovereign nation states, which is based on the five principles of peaceful coexistence and the UN Charter. Second, the absolute priority must be to alleviate poverty in every nation on the planet, which is easily possible if the existing technologies are being used for the benefit of the common good. Third, the life expectancy of all people living must be prolonged to the fullest potential by creating modern health systems in every country on the planet. This is also the only way how the present and future potential pandemics can be overcome or be prevented. Fourth, since mankind is the only creative species known so far in the universe, and given the fact that human creativity is the only source of wealth through the potentiality, uh, through the potentially limitless discovery of new universal principles. One of the main aims of the new international security and development architecture must be providing access to universal education for every child and adult person living. The true nature of man is to become a beautiful soul, as Friedrich Schiller discusses this. And the only person who can fulfill that condition is the genius. Fifth, the international financial system must be reorganized so that it can provide productive credits to accomplish these aims. A reference point can be the original Bretton Woods system as Franklin D. Roosevelt intended it, but was never implemented due to his untimely death and the four laws proposed by Linda LaRouche. The primary aim of such a new credit system must be to increase dramatically the living standard of especially the nations of the global south and of the poor in the global north. Six, the new economic order <coughs> must focus on creating the conditions for modern industries and agriculture starting with the infrastructural development of all continents to eventually be connected by tunnels and bridges to become a world land bridge. Seventh, the new global security architecture must eliminate the concept of geopolitics by ending the division of the world into blocks. The security concerns of every sovereign nation must be taken into account. Nuclear weapons and other weapons of mass destruction must be immediately banned. Through international cooperation, the means must be developed to make nuclear weapons technologically obsolete, as it was originally intended by the proposal which became known as the SDI, suggested by LaRouche and made as an offer to the Soviet Union by President Reagan. Aids. In former times, one civilization at one corner of the world could go under and the rest of the world would only find out years later due to the length of distances and the time needed for travel. Now, for the first time, because of nuclear weapons, pandemics, the internet and other global effects, mankind is sitting in one boat. Therefore, a solution to the existential threat to humanity cannot be found with the help of secondary or partial arrangements, but the solution must be found on the level of that higher one, which is more powerful than the many. It requires the thinking on the level of the coincidencia oppositorum, the coincidence of opposites of Nicolaus of Cusa. Ninth, in order to overcome the conflicts arising out of quarreling opinions, which is how empires have maintained control over the underlings, the economic, 
social and political order has to be brought in cohesion <clears throat> with the lawfulness of the physical universe. <clears throat> in European philosophy, this was discussed as being in character with natural law. In Indian philosophy as cosmology and in other cultures, appropriate notions can be found. Modern sciences like space science, biophysics, or thermonuclear fusion science will increase the knowledge of mankind about this lawfulness continuously. A similar cohesion can be found in the great work of classical art in different cultures. Hence, the basic assumption for the new paradigm is that man is fundamentally good and capable to infinitely perfect the creativity of his mind and the beauty of his soul. And being the most advanced geo geological force in the universe, which proves that the lawfulness of the mind and that of the physical universe are in correspondence and cohesion. And that all evil is the result of a lack of development and therefore can be overcome. A new world economic order is emerging involving the vast majority of the countries of the global south. The European nations and the United States must not fight this effort, but by joining hands with the developing countries, cooperate to shape the next ep epoch of development of the human species to become a renaissance of the highest and most noble expressions of creativity. Let us therefore create an international movement of world citizens who work together to shape the next phase in the evolution of mankind, the new epoch. World citizens of all countries unite. 